hey, what's up, man? Thanks for uh, having us on the show. Uh, this is Skinny for Mushroom Head, and uh, we are currently about to release album number nine. Uh, just short of 31 years, coming up on 31 years, and uh, August 9th, the uh, new album, uh, its title is called The Devil, and uh, it should be available pretty much everywhere. We start touring to support it uh, early August over in the UK and Europe. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, in the early fall, we'll be doing some touring in the States in October. So uh, really looking forward to getting out and playing some of this new music. Fantastic, Skinny. Thanks for joining us. 31 years, bro. Like, you don't look a day over 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the mask helps keep us young. <laughs> it's actually going to be difficult. I've been getting used to Zoom interviews since COVID where I can see people's faces and I can tell when I'm giving them the shits or if they're starting to get bored. But with you, you're going to be really hard to read. <laughs> yeah, it comes with the territory. I think that's part of our longevity. We all, got a hell of a po we all have a hell of a poker face. <laughs> as long as you say, bro, Mushroom Head will release your ninth studio album called The Devil on August the 9th. So how are you feeling about it at this stage of the cycle? Oh man, really, really excited. Like, um, uh, you know, on, on album eight was uh, a wonderful life and we had released it in June of 2020 and COVID came in and just had, you know, its way with the world and definitely had its way with all the entertainers. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely felt it firsthand how, uh, you know, non-essential heavy metal drums were at the time. So we all had to kind of buckle down and you know dig down in our spirits and say hey man we want to do this you know of course we're going to keep doing this and you know it's our livelihood it's who we are create music no matter if there's you know a world you know to create it for left or not we're going to just do it until we die so it feels really good to have an opportunity to release an album and then get out there and perform and support it on stage 100%, mate. And can, can you tell us a bit about the album from a musical point of view and what you're actually going for with it? Uh, and this one, you know, it, again, album number nine, it, it was very much another, let's just let the music take us where it, you know, take it where it may, you know, let it lead. And the album is very diverse. There's a lot of doom and gloom. There's some super aggressive, heavy, heavy stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff in between. Super creepy, dark you know, typical stuff that, you know, ends up coming out of us, whether we intend it or not, everything ends up with a creepy, heavy, dark vibe. It's just what ended up being the mushroom head sound. So yeah, there's plenty of that. And then, you know, like we, we definitely stayed out of our comfort zone. I don't know really if there is one with mushroom head, but we try to stay out of our own comfort zones and play with tempos and play with different keys and play with non traditional uh, arrangements and um, just, let the music kind of guide us and uh some songs were a little more straightforward and you know um put together specifically for you know like this is a heavy metal song and then some of it's just straight art and then it turns into dark art which we love yeah. I, I love the way you start the album too with the track eye to eye like it opens with an almost funky sort of guitar riff and then just kicks in with the gut-wrenching scream and it's typical mushroom head but was that meant to be a little bit misleading or are you just having a bit of fun with it yeah, that's definitely a, a little bit of fun. So th that's, uh, you know, my, my older brother, Gravy, uh, that, that song was uh, one of the first ones that he, actually that song was re the first time he and I got in the studio and we recorded anything. That was the first, uh, the, the vibe of that song was the first session. Yeah, wow. We hadn't, we hadn't recorded together in over 10 years and we didn't have any material or nothing. We just got together and we talked and laughed more than we recorded. But when we went back and listened, we were like, man, check that out. Because we didn't, you know, there was no click track. And we just sat down and just started jamming. Mm. So we recorded it and listened to sections of it and said, man, that that right there could make a badass song. And Gravy, man, you know, he's got a he's got a hell of a lot of guitar playing background. And he's just a fun guy. And, you know, he likes, you know, picking and playing all kinds of different stuff like banjo style shit. And, you know, he, he really, really enjoys playing um, any stringed instrument, really. Uh, but he was just kind of having fun. And I was like, man, that's just got a good vibe to it. And if we came into something just blazing heavy, you know, I was like, do that again, you know, and <laughs> it just kind of started. So, yeah, we were just having fun, man. 
Well, it's a great guitar riff. Like I just put it on and I was just like just getting into in the funk and then it's just come in and smash me in the face. It's like that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one that one definitely it, it it rose above as we worked on it a little bit. We we're like, man, doesn't matter what else is on the record, this one just has to be first. It just sets <laughs> the tone to like, you know, we we we're just that's kind of the attitude we had. Like I said, we were this album comes across a little heavier, probably a little more aggressive, um, just because of post COVID or it started writing during COVID, you know, the world was still very uncertain. It wasn't turned back on yet. And we were like, well, let's just keep, you know, doing what we do, make music, you know, and hope the world turns back on. So this album definitely has more of a sinister, more of an aggressive tone, just because, you know, we weren't so hopeful anymore. <laughs> we were like, everything's fucked. Let's record. <laughs> Uh, you've released a single to date anyway you've released a single fall in line um i was going to ask you if it was a good sonic representation of the album but then i thought it can't be because there's so much going on there that it must be difficult for you to actually choose songs to represent the album because nothing definitively does does it no no it really doesn't if you were to pick another song and anyone you know heard that they'd think oh well that they sound like it, it's more like a faith no more or a pink floyd almost like you know it, it is so diverse that it's hard to put a label on even Mushroom Head in and of itself. But, um, you know, once the label had heard the whole album and thinking, you know, a little bit more straightforward, heavy metal that doesn't, you know, necessarily offend or creep anyone out, so to speak. <laughs> Good luck um, with that. <laughs> but, yeah. But, you know, maybe a little more accessible, that song was, as far as, like I said, it's just a straightforward, heavy metal tune, catchy. Um nothing over the top like and it wasn't supposed to be it just had a lot of energy and uh to be honest with you it was the last song that we wrote for the album okay. so it was kind of like you know it came out of kind of nowhere and it was still kind of fresh so when the label said they liked it we were like all right cool let's go with that one then <laughs> we're very we've been doing this a long time so we're not picky <laughs> you know anyone if the label wants to support something then we're gonna absolutely let's let's take their lead and Napalm's been absolutely great to us. Uh, we, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and they've uh, really got their finger on the pulse of, you know, not just modern metal. They they get what's happening, you know, and they understand the whole, oh, just how an artist feels. You know, they care about product, and they make cool vinyl, and they just, they they really, they really are, are they're a good, good camp to be with. So I'm real, real honored to be working with them. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm going to veer off track a little bit here, mate, because, um, and this is going to be a really difficult one for you to answer, sorry, but just say someone stumbled across this interview and they've never heard of Mushroom Head before, like, using your whole catalogue, give me five songs that they should listen to to get the vibe of the band. Well, boy, that, that that's kind of tough. I don't even know if I know the real names of the songs because we all uh, have working titles. But, no, I, 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 could, I could definitely play some ball here to some degree. Um, you know, I think a lot of people need like a kind of lead in. They never really heard it or seen it. And it's kind of heavy metal or, a, you know, Mortal Kombat meets heavy metal blue man group, if you will. Uh, we tell that to a lot of people just so they get a, a basic understanding. But, you know, if you went through the albums, you know, I, I think there's some, some songs off of 13 that are really, really heavy and just kind of poignant uh, as far as like songs that, you know, Shroom was kind of shining in those moments. Uh, well, you know, th there's a few off of that album. One is called Destroy the World Around Me. It's a little more doomy and epic, but uh, it definitely captured the vibe and just the, the feeling. Very creative in certain spots, too. Uh, go back to, uh, what is it, Buick? So, and, and Double X, probably a lot of people know that one better. But Blomp is a, definitely a favorite. Fun to play. Uh, it's really, really high energy, still captures that vibe when we do it. Um, off the last album, The Heresy, just just really epic and doomy. And, you know, uh, it got that haunting vocal from uh, Miss Jackie, which, you know, always shines. This this new album, there's some, there's some man contenders on it. We're going to drop another single here. It's called... Uh, Oh, what is the real title of uh, that? One? Oh, prepackaged, and uh, th that one is it's pretty heavy and, and dark. So, what was that four? We need one more. Yeah, give us one more. 
<laughs> you get you need one more. Okay, you said five. So um, we can go all the way back to uh, 1993. The first album, the song would be Slow Thing. First song, first album. It just captured the vibe of the creativity of the time. And, you know, it, it was powerful back then to use just samples, to use just a straight piano and heavy guitars, no vocals, and to wear costumes and masks and open up with that song every night. And uh, it still is one of my favorite songs to play. So there's there's five. I think you asked for five, right? I did. I'd probably throw Sun Doesn't Rise in there as well, bro, because, like, every time that song comes on, I get fucking chills. Yeah, there's a lot of energy on that man. Thirteen's full of them. Sun doesn't yeah. rise. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. That that's a, a really really deep one. I really always enjoyed that song. And I mean, you know, that thirteen's a thirteen's a monster record. There's there's some other really really cool stuff too. But yeah, those are those are some contenders in my book. Call the Devil also sees longtime guitarist Dave Felton return to the fold, mate. So how did it feel having him back? And and how did it impact the overall sound on this album? Um, you know, he, he contributed to just two on this album just because of time and scheduling and logistics and just how things ended up being. But it was more about just kicking it and hanging out with him again. You know, it had been 10 years. And like I said, that, that first track, Eye to Eye, was uh, res that track was a result of the very first recording session that he and I did together in over 10 years. So, um, man, it, it definitely led to the vibe of the entire album being just kind of fun again and just like anything's possible so yeah man it was just really really good to you know share the stage and the recording studio again with him mm. and once again you utilize the dual male female vocal attack with jackie laponza and um scott beck on there so how difficult is it to get the dynamics right like with metal you don't often get the male female dynamics but so how often is it or sorry how hard is it to get that right it, it wouldn't be easy well, you know, there is a lot of experimenting for sure. Just to, to see where they contrast or complement each other in the best way. Sometimes they're kind of in the same range. So one needs to take the lead and one should sit back. And sometimes that's just a little bit of experimenting and seeing who actually just sounds better. Who do we like? Who's more pleasant to the ear? And not that any of them are wrong, but that's why you, you hear like, kind of complex blends of vocals going on sometimes with us where there's harmonies tucked underneath, but they're not very, not in the lead whatsoever. It's just because some of those parts and some of the texture, once we removed it after experimenting and playing with it, once we removed it, it just became very plain. So we just kind of tuck some of that stuff back in there. And it's just a result of the, the sound because of the experimenting and trying to layer so much. But yeah, it is difficult sometimes because everyone's really fucking good. And how do you say oh yeah this part's not so good you're not so good this <laughs> one's better you're better for this you're better for that everyone's really great so um i think a lot of times they even know the vibe of the part that oh man that's that's totally a scotty part or oh that's totally a jackie part so um it, you know it, everyone's really comfortable with working with each other and and that would i think lent itself to a lot more opportunity for this this album to kind of shine because there's a lot of lead vocal moments all over this album man all three of the vocalists literally i think did an amazing job this time absolutely it's sort of you probably would, wouldn't get this because you produce the album and you live with it every day but from my point of view like as a listener the, the one thing that struck me was like you listen along and you sort of in your head you're trying to trying to guess what vocal is coming next and um when i was listening through your album i had no idea like i'd be listening to one part i'd be thinking yet yeah, my voice has got to come in here and do this. And then Jackie would come in and it'd be beautiful. And it, that, that effect works really well. Like it's not what you'd expect, I guess I'm trying to say. Yeah. And sometimes that that's it. We find that like a formula just does not work for us. So we have to let the music kind of tell us where it needs to go. And, you know, again, that's part of the, I think the beauty of producing your own music and having, you know, other artists that are open to experimenting and, and really, seeing it through instead of hey i just have my one idea and that's what i want sometimes yeah. that's perfect and, and we get that but most of really likes to experiment mm -hmm. and recently bray like you personally took on keyboards samples and water drums live and on this you shared the studio drums and percussion with uh with aiden and robbie so i know from experience how hard it is working with one drummer how the fuck did you make it work with three 
<laughs> you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's fun because like certain sections, it's like, all right, well, let's, let's, you know, here's the basic beat and here's the groove and here's the riff. But, you know, maybe your take on it could inspire a different drum pattern or a different guitar pattern, you know, because of the way they did their kick, you know, accents or whatever. So sometimes you'll end up with something completely different that was based off of the drum beat from another guy. So it doesn't always just, you know, work for just for drums. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, you can just mute it all out and take that beat and turn it into almost an electronic beat that's going on underneath and turns into a layer. So it's not just, all right, you play this part, you play this part, or you play this song, and, you know, I'll play this song. Um, a lot of it was, hey, I, you know, kind of hit a wall here. I keep playing the same beat on this <laughs> one. What do you hear? You know, here, take the sticks, go at it. So again, it was very, very fun this time and very, uh, it was one of the faster drum albums. Usually drums take forever, but between the three of us kind of passing it back and forth and just, you know, all of us listening going, ah, oh, that, that'll be, that's a more fun, it's easier to play, it's more fun, it bounces, yeah, let's do that, you know, or sometimes it's like, oh, that, th that, that beat just doesn't work. So it was really fun to have three guys just go at it and have their approach and some songs actually have all three of us on it it's a conglomeration of it wow oh, yeah. very cool very cool now we sort of touched on this before mate but your previous album a wonderful life was universally lauded by people people loved it so was, was it tempting in a way to rehash that winning formula on this next album or was it important for you to sort of step away and, and continue growing you know it, it's funny because there are some songs that are on the sound that feel like they just stepped right off the last page of a wonderful life mm -hmm. without a doubt. It'd be just because it, it's, you know, the, the current lineups, you know, influences or whatever, not much has changed in four years and in, in certain aspects, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. And then, you know, on the, on the flip side, quite a bit changed. Like I said, this album's a little more aggressive. It's a little more, it's a little darker and some of it's, some of it's very, again, very experimental. There's a song, I think, Hallucination. And uh, we just ended up calling it, it, it was labeled Dark Art for a while, one of the working titles, just because it's it's very artsy and you just kind of don't know where it is. Very non-traditional as far as a structure. Um, yeah, I, again, you know, it it's not not always easy. Sweet. Eyes. So Mushroom had formed back in 1993, mate. So... What was the musical climate like that gave birth to the band and where did you fit in initially? We didn't fit in. I don't think, I think maybe now we're starting to fit in finally after 30 years. It's like, hey, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm onto something. I don't know. It like a, a visionary man. Metal. <laughs> Are you visionary? Yeah, like this, this, yeah, right? This mass heavy metal thing might catch on one day. Let's see. <laughs> Who knew, right? I mean, God bless Slipknot, man. One of the biggest heavy metal bands in the world, you know? Holy shit. So, you know, that that, that shows me, you know, I wasn't that far off back in 93 that, you know, this type of entertainment, you know, not only, you know, could be popular, but here it is proof, you know, I mean, it, it's beyond popular. It's part of subculture at this point. Horror movies, comics, you know, cosplay, all that stuff. It wasn't that stuff wasn't around in, in 93. So for us to start a theatrical kind of heavy metal thing, we didn't really fit in in many places uh, at all with metal bands, rock bands. The places that we kind of fit were more festival style. Like we, we would actually get to play like raves. So um, th that kind of opened our eyes to shit. We're going to just have to do our own thing. So um, we did. We, we hit the street and just started playing as much as we could. Yeah, cool. Now, I can edit this question out too, bro, if you don't want to answer it, because I didn't have it in here initially. But when you mentioned Slipknot, like, do you think, because I, I know a lot of it was media generated, that supposed war between you guys back then, but do you think that that had a negative effect on, on you guys at all in terms of moving forward as a band? Uh, You know, I mean... How could it not in the reality of things, you know, any negative ever said, oh, you know, negative process, you know, still press. Yeah, it's still negative. I've been doing this a really long time and people tend to remember your downfalls. They tend to pick on your downfalls. They tend to pick on any, like it doesn't make me a politician or another band member, or another band. 
people tend to remember the shitty moments or just how it was, whether you had something to do with it or not. And it, that's unfortunate for people that really believe in what they do and they move on or, you know, whatever, you know, I, I just, in, in hindsight, I, I wish, you know, a lot of that shit wouldn't have ever happened or had been said, but you know, whatever, here we are again, they're one of the biggest bands in the world. God bless them. I can only imagine how much shit they had to go through and have to go through just to create music and art. You know, that I'm, I'm, really happy for them in in so many fucking ways like i said it's proof positive that you know people like this kind of entertainment yeah so yeah you know like i i, I got a lot of compassion for them like i said i I, could, I can only imagine how much shit they've had to deal with true and those poor bastards so imagine how big they'd be if they didn't get dropped caught up in all that bullshit <laughs> right right <laughs> so back up to you guys like um you, you sound it, it draws pretty much from every form of metal ever made mate but you also got elements of hip-hop punk there's electronics you got so much going on bro like how do you how do you find the balance in the writing and recording process it must be a fucking nightmare in it it again sometimes you just have to let the music take the lead and not get lost into you know what it could be because sometimes if it takes it away from the original idea or that original just it can be a vibe you know or a bounce or a, a lyrical phrase or something once you start layering things in and making things, as we say, proper or how it should be like organized or arranged, I think it starts to lose its actual genuineness. Yep. So that's why we leave it. And, you know, maybe we're a little ADD as well. You know, we one style just doesn't sit with us well. You know, we <laughs> want to try a little bit of all of it, you know, in everything. So, you know, it, it's it's part of it. Part of it is capturing the. uh just the vibe of of how we feel for whether it lasts for a month or a week um it, it's really important to try to get some of that stuff out and get it recorded and then watch it grow or sometimes you're like well i was just in a shitty mood and that song's really going to be that that whole idea is way too slow and depressing move it on move on don't even bring it back up you know <laughs> I, I could imagine there'd be there'd be quite a few songs where the band speak you know like half of it likes the song half doesn't with all that extra stuff going on so is do you like a vote and majority rules on something like that? Or as producer, do you get final say? Well, yeah, I always end up final say. Somebody's got to, you know, make the call. Yeah. But in the in the long run, the, the strong stuff just floats to the top, man. It just rises above everything else. And we don't really have to, you know, talk about the turd and the punch bowl, so to speak. We're really just like, <laughs> just move, move along, man. That That's not a good idea. You know, it's like. You know, I know it was your inspiration for the day, but did it capture any of us the next day or yourself? Mm. We say it a lot, man. We go home Picasso and we come back the next day as the Dutch boy. <laughs> so what kind of painting we do, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so after nine albums, mate, like, do you, do you, would you say that Mushroom Head has, has found your sound or are you still experimenting and growing? I think that is part of finding our sound or at least identifying what it is that we do is that experimenting. We are constantly looking for new textures and tones to amplify how we actually feel, to bring our emotions to life, to capture some of that stuff. Um, you know, it's we're not a one size fits all band and I'm actually proud to say it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So I was doing the figures before, mate, and, and I actually can't remember the last time you guys came to Australia. So what, when, when are you going to rectify that? Uh, as soon as possible. I, I, last time we were there, I had one of the best times ever. It was the Soundwave 20, 2014. Yep. And we, we got to do all of it, and our off days were oh, uh, our, our side shows. Yeah, our side shows were with uh, Zombie and Corn, I believe. And it was a bit of a blur, but, man, what a hell of a time. What a hell of a country. I would love to come back as soon as possible the album called the devil comes out on august the 9th mate so what's next for mushroom head after that what do you got planned um actually we we start a european and uk tour just a small run a couple of weeks but it actually we, we started i think on the 7th or the 8th so we're on tour the day the album comes out and uh when we come back we're going to do a month almost a month in the states uh for the month of october so we got, you know, a good six, seven, eight weeks of touring coming uh, to support the album. I'm really looking forward to it.
Yeah. Can you just move your right arm for me, mate, so I know you're a real person? You haven't moved the whole interview. I just need to know <laughs> if I'm talking to someone or if I'm talking to a robot. It, it, it's animatronic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, Skinny, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, mate. Call the Devil is out August 9th. I think it's probably the best thing you guys have done in a long time. It's fucking great. So can't wait for people Thank to wrap their heads around it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.